Now that I've been able to finally pull myself away from the playtesting grind for YCS Indy, I wanted to talk about actually, speaking of that, what it's like to playtest for a YCS because I haven't been to a YCS in pretty much 10 years and I forgot how different of an event it can be. Let's dive on into it, shall we? Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, AvrielR32 here, and please help me destroy the boo-boo stain off that like and subscribe button, as well as that ding-dong Taco Bell notification bell, which I just had last night, and I'm still feeling the effects of this morning, as I try to talk louder than the lawnmower outside. I really do appreciate all the support. I'm sorry I haven't uploaded in like three, four days now. I've been dealing with personal stuff, and I've also been trying to grind out uh, for YCS Indy to try and get this Tenpai build just right. There's a few different things I am cooking up and trying to make some nice spicy goo sauce, ladies and gentlemen. But hope you're having a fantastic day. Speaking of testing for uh, YCSs and nationals, things like that in general, um, I've only been to, I want to say like five YCSs. There was YCS Orlando in 2010. YCS Miami and I during windup formats like 2012-ish, which my dad actually made day two with uh, Chamberlain, which is crazy to think about. Uh, there was YCS Atlanta in 2016 where I got absolutely decimated by Pepe, uh, and then there was two other YCSs that I think were both in Miami that I went to. I've been to like four or five YCSs, something like that. So now I'm going to YCS Indy, and I've been play testing like crazy and practicing like crazy, and. It's so weird to be testing for a big event like this, knowing how good of players go to these kind of events. It's so different from like your typical regional, like just your, your local player crowd, like the players that you see there. And it's it's different because of the fact that there's literally cards that I'm playing just because I'm going to a YCS. Perfect example being Heatwave. Obviously, I'm going to be playing Tempai Cash Tira, but I'm not playing Heatwave. I'm playing Solemn Strike because Solemn Strike effectively does the same thing. And I don't feel like a card like Heatwave is going to be able to carry me as far as, say, something like Solemn Strike would. Now, obviously, there's the argument to be made of, well, you know, Avery, if you're playing Heatwave and you top deck it, then the opponent can't summon any monsters anyway, and whatever. There is that argument, but at the same time, I don't feel like a card like that is going to carry you as far as you hope that it does. And even in a lot of the builds I'm seeing from like some of the nationals that are going on around in the world and stuff, none of the builds are really even playing Heatwave. A lot of Tempai decks are cutting Heatwave in favor of like Anti Spell or Rivalry, whether it be in the main or the side, or Bite Steals, other hand traps, which is not bad. Like, if you're playing 15 to 18 hand traps in your Tempai deck and you're side decking six to nine more hand traps, not to be confused with 69, right? Uh, nice. But you have those more options available to you to where you have different hand traps for different matchups to where it's not necessarily better to play Heat Wave, it's maybe better to play different hand traps because of the size of the event, because of playing in a 10 plus round event. You know, you have to consider that when you go to these big events, whether it's nationals, YCS, what have you, you're going a lot more rounds than you would a typical regional, where a typical regional is anywhere from eight to nine rounds or seven if it's a smaller one. Whereas at a YCS, you're playing 12 rounds of Swiss. So you need consistency. You need tech cards that no one else is talking about. You need these things that are gonna help propel you to more wins than playing like what everybody's gonna be expecting which is something like Heatwave, where people are going to prepare for it, or they're just going to take the risk of the 33% in a 40-card deck and say, you go first, and if you don't hit that Heatwave, you're SOL. You're probably not going to win that game if that's your only plan uh, in your side. And so, because of that, I've been messing around with a lot of different things. I'm seeing a lot more cash tier at Tempai pop up, uh, which my deck profile has over 2,000 views at this point at the time you're making this video. So, it's it's definitely popped off. There was even a guy I played yesterday at Locals who saw my deck list and was and is subscribed to the channel. Shout out to you, bro. Um, who saw my list. Like, the list has been making its rounds. And so, because of that, I feel like a lot more people now are on Cash Tier at Tempai, even with the amount of bricks you got to play, being Rise Heart, Theosis, and Birth, if you go that far with it. Um, and so, it's really made testing for this YCS kind of difficult in the sense that I'm so used to thinking in one mindset of this game, and I'm so used to, you know thinking that certain decks are ass and other decks are good, when yet when it comes to a YCS, 
the world is kind of your oyster in the sense of the, you know, people are going to be playing tech cards that throw people off. People are going to be going into these big events thinking, you know, I'm playing in this YCS. Most people are probably going to be on Snake Eyes just because that is honestly the best deck in the room, whether it's the Cash Tier version or not. I'm going to play this, assuming I'm going to be playing nothing but Snake Eyes and just do well because of it. You know, look at the Chamber deck that made top four at the regional in Philadelphia. He played nothing but Snake Eyes, and even he himself said he got lucky. Was playing no protection cards, no Scarecrow, no Battle Fader, just burn cards, and he just did well because of it. He may have been on one-day piece, I don't know. But the, the point that I'm making is that Snake Eyes couldn't really do anything to his burn deck, and he just blind went second and hoped for the best. And in a similar fashion with Tempai, you're blind going second and hoping for the best with anywhere from 15 to 18, maybe more hand traps if you're, you know, wanting to be that crazy because I, I don't think you need really 20 hand traps in the deck. Um, it, it's it's so just difficult. And what's weird too is that, and I made a community post about this, I'm even testing things like 50 card, 60 card piles, 55 card piles of Tempai Kashtira just because... You can play like almost 30 engine cards, like 30 starter cards, and then the rest of your stuff is just hand traps and utility. You play 20, 21 hand traps. The rest is just like other utility cards, and like you're just off to the races. And so it's it's really weird because I, I know I keep saying that over and over, but there's really no other way to describe it because you would think like if you do well at locals, then that means that your deck is good. But perfect example... I took a 50 card list to locals last Thursday. I went four and one. My only loss was to voiceless. I was satisfied with the results, but I was also irritated with the results. Not because like I got four wins, one loss, and like came in second or third, whatever it was, but because I still lost to voiceless voice. And going into this YCS, you know, there's gonna be better players than like at your locals. Like, and not just mine, this can be anyone's locals. Like, there's gonna be better players there, especially if they've traveled far, they've play tested like crazy, they know what they're doing, right? And so, you're not gonna get those free wins like you would at like a locals, like round one or two. Like, yesterday I went to locals, I played three Tempai mirror matches in a row. Round three, I lost my third Tempai mirror, which was kind of my own fault because I decided to go second in game three and got Heat Wave, but like, that's Yu Gi Oh! Like, I'm not going to run into three mirrors in a row. It, it is what it is. And even then, I'm like, okay, I wanted to test the mirror. I won two out of the three mirrors. Probably could have won the third if I had opted to go first in game three. It is what it is. So I went three and one and got fourth. So again, though, I'm not fully satisfied, as happy as I was with the result. I'm not fully satisfied because I'm losing to things that I don't feel like I can really afford to lose to or I need to adjust my deck for this YCS that's going to be 12 plus rounds long, depending if we make day two or get top 16, whatever the case may be. And we have to prepare correctly for that. And it puts you in such a different mindset because now instead of like going to a regional where you're like, just like, let's throw Snake Eye in the mix here. I'm going to play Snake Eye with 18 hand traps. Here's the, the standard engine, blah, blah, blah. Maybe you put some tech cards in the extra or the side. Maybe you play two Kiki Nagashis instead of one, whatever. And then you move on with your day. And, you know, really it just comes down to how well you pilot the deck at that point, right? It comes down to, like, your matchups. You know, the first couple rounds, if you're hitting stun players and they win the die roll against you, like, it is what it is. You prepare for the highest common denominator, not the lowest table 500 garbage stun player. And it kind of gives me a headache because as soon as I think that, like, okay, this looks good, I'm going to test this, this looks crazy... It just kind of blows up in my face, or I brick, or I find something that doesn't work. A uh, perfect example being, I was testing a 53-card list last night. I'm sure some people are going to say, Avery, you got to play 40. Uh, trust me, when you start experimenting with these things and you see how good it is, you realize you can push past the 40 barrier. Like, someone at the Honduras National played 45-card Tempai Cash Tier and got fourth place. That's only five cards away from 50. Play five more engine cards, it's pretty much the same thing. With only 11 hand traps, which is insane to me. Um, but I was playing the, this 53 card list that I'm messing around with and there were some hands where like I was just bricking or there were some hands where like I would open up absolutely busted and like my opponent just couldn't do nothing. A perfect example would be I tried to make Ancient Fairy Dragon, but I wasn't on Cash Tira Rise Heart, so I couldn't do the whole Chirabini line. That whole combo became really inconsistent because I needed another level 7 monster on the board. So I had to totally rework the deck. Still was able to go 3-1, and one, but had I taken that to the YCS, 
I basically would have had like three or four cards in my extra deck that I would hardly ever be able to make because I didn't deck build correctly. And obviously you can minimize these things by play testing and practicing and getting better, but eventually you hit a point to where your build just needs to be good and you need what's consistent and going to give you the best results the most consistent amount of the time. Like I'm not gonna play pure tempi because I swear to God that lawnmower is gonna cause me to do like 3000 jump cuts. I'm not playing pure tempi because out of a hundred test hands, I ended up with over 10 bad hands. That is not consistency that I want. You know, you can say it comes down to the build and whatever, but the build's pretty standard, especially if you're playing pure tempo. It's 15 hand traps, 14 engine cards, a couple other tech cards, you're good to go. Guys, let me know what you think down in the comments. How is it that you play test for big events? How is it that you play test in general? How is it that you choose to get better? Guys, let me know all that and more. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.